Okay, so good day guys. So today we're going to discuss about the introduction to automata theory and formal language. So this is our lesson two for the automata. Let's proceed again. Uh, let's discuss first what is the meaning of automata. So automata theory is a study of abstract computational devices. So the word automata is derived from the Greek word automata, which means self-acting. An automaton or automata in plural is an abstract self-propelled computing device which follows a predetermined sequence of option operations and automatically. An automaton with a finite number of states is called the finite automaton or FA or the finite state machines. In our previous uh, in our, uh, our previous lesson, we discussed about the finite state machine, and also for the remaining chapter, we're going to discuss the finite automata. Okay, let's proceed first to the introductions of our automata, the purpose and motivation. So this course is on the theory of computation, which tries to answer the following questions. What are the mathematical properties of computer hardware and software? What is the computation and what is an algorithm? Can we give rigorous mathematical definition of these functions? So what are the limitations of computers? Can everything be computed? As we will see, the answer to this question is no. Okay. The purpose of the theory of computation is to develop formal mathematical models of computations that reflect real-world computers. So the theory of computation can be divided into the following three areas. The complexity theory, the computability theory, and the automata theory. The complexity theory, the main question asked in this area is what makes some problems computationally hard and other problems easy. Informally, a problem is called easy if it is efficiently solvable. Example easy problems are sorting of sequence of same numbers or searching for name in telephone directory. On the other hand, a problem is called hard if it cannot be solved efficiently or if you don't know whether it can be solved efficiently. Example of hard problems are timetable scheduling the factoring of 300 digit integer interprime factors. The theoretical models that we propose in order to understand solvable and unsolvable problems led to the development of real computers. The central question in computability theory is classified problems as being solvable and unsolvable. Automata theory deals with the definition and properties of different types of computational models. Examples of such models are finite summata. This is used in text processing, compilers, and hardware design. The context programmers, these are used to define programming languages and in artificial intelligence. The Turing machines, this form a simple abstract model of a real computation such as the PC at home. Actually, before we start, we will review some mathematical proof techniques. As you may guess, this is a fairly theoretical course with lots of definition students and proofs. We're going to discuss first the mathematical preliminaries. So, a set. So, a set is a collection of, of well defined objects. Example are the sets of all Dutch Olympic gold medalists, the sets of all pubs in Ottawa, and the sets of all even natural numbers. The sets of natural number is number of 1, 2, 3, and so on. The sets of integer is, is the elements of Z is negative 3, negative 2, and so on. The sets of rational numbers. And the sets of real number is denoted by R. Let's go proceed to the sets, unions, and intersections. So union symbols can be read as OR. And intersection symbols can be read as N. The intersections of two sets are those elements that belong to both sets. The union of sets are elements from both sets. Example, we have the elements of set A is A, B, C, D, E. And elements of set B is at BG. To get the union of these two sets is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, we will just uh, combine the two sets. Okay, example in the rubrical number. For the elements of set A, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And for the elements of B is... 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. To get the A intersection B is, is equivalent to 
empty sets because there's no elements in common for these two sets. The union intersections and difference. Intersections. A intersection B is called the intersection of A and B. Okay. For the union, A union B is called the union of A and B. Example, for the elements of A is 3, 5, 7. Union of 4, 6, 8 is equivalent to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Again, when we say union, we're going to combine these two sets. Difference. A difference B is called the difference of A and B. Example, the elements of 2, 4, 7, difference of the 4, 5, 7 is equivalent to number 2. Okay? Difference of A and B. The next one is the properties of sets. Let's discuss first the three main uh, properties of sets, the commutative, associative, and distributive. For the commutative, we have the rules A union B is equal to B union A. For the intersections, we have A intersection B is equivalent to B intersection A. For the associative, we have for the union, we have the rules A union B union C is equivalent to A union B union C. For the intersection A intersection B intersection C is equivalent to A, A intersection B intersection C. For the distributive rule, we have A union B intersection C is equivalent to A union B intersection A union C. For the intersection, we have A intersection B union C is equivalent to A intersection B union of A intersection C. So don't forget the rules for the associative, commutative, and distributive. Let's make some example. We have the elements of set A, we have 7, 8, 9. The elements of set B, we have 5, 9, 12. We're going to get the union in the commutative. So let's follow the rule A union B and B union A. Let's get first the A union B. So A union B is 5, 7, 8, 9, and 12. While the B union A, we have the 5, 7, 8, 9, and 12. This is to get the commutative union. Okay. Next example for the intersection, we have the elements of A. The element set A is 7, 8, 9. The elements of set B is 5, 9, and 12. Okay. Okay. Follow the rules. A in the section B is equal to B in the section A. So let's get first the A in the section B. A in the section B is 9. Both sides, both sets has a same number. Then the B in the section A is same. The answer is 9. This is how to get the commutative intersection. Associative union of sets. Let's follow the rule. A union B union C is equal to A union B union C. We have the elements of set A is 2, 4, 6, and 8. And the elements of B is 4, 5, 6, 7. And the elements of C is 7 and 8. To get the A union B, let's combine these two sets A union B. We have equivalent to 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then A union B union C is 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. This will be the left-hand side. Now. Then for the get, the B union C is 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then to get the A union B union C is 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this will be the right hand side so the equivalent for the left hand side and the right hand side for the associative union of sets for associative intersections we have the elements of set a is 2 4 6 8 the elements of set b is 4 5 6 7 and the elements of c is is 7 and 8 we have the follow the rules a in the section b in section c is equivalent to a in the section b in section c Let's get first the A in the section B. The A in the section B is equivalent to 4 and 6. Okay? And to get the A in the section B in section C is equivalent to empty. This will be the left hand side. To get the 5 in the to get the B in the section C is we have the common in A and common in B is 
7. And to get the A in the section B, the section C is empty. So equivalent of left hand side and RHS is the same. It's equivalent. Okay, this is how to get the associative intersection. How about the union of sets in distributive over in the section of sets? We have the elements of set A is 4, 6, 8, 10, and the elements of set B is 6, 8, 9, and the elements of set C is 2, 4, 7, 8. Let's follow the rules. A union B in the section C is equivalent to A union B in the section of A union C. B in the section C is equivalent to 8. Okay. And A union B in the section C is equivalent to 4, 6, 8, and 10. This will be the left hand side. And to get the A union B is 4, 6, 8, 10, 9. Let's make it in order. So our answer is 4, 6, 8, 9, and 10. And A union B, the section of A union C is, is 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's make it in order. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 8 and 10. For the right hand side is 4, 6, 8, and 10. So equivalent of RHS is equivalent to, is equals to LHS. The intersection of sets in distributive over union of sets, A, for the elements of A is, we have D, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8. The elements of B is 4, 6, 8. And the elements of C is 1, 2, 3, and 8. So, okay, let's follow the rules. A, the section B, union C, is equivalent to A, in section B, union of A, intersection C. So for the left-hand side, let's get first the B, union C. We have the 4, 6, 8, 1, 2, 3. Let's make it in order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. A, the section B, union C is, for the left-hand side is, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Then A in the section B is equivalent to 4, 6, and 8. Union of A in the section C is 2 and 8. And the RHS is 2, 4, 6, and 8. For the left hand side is 2, 4, 6, and 8. Same RHS and same LHS. Equal. Now, for your activity number one in automata, Identify the intersection and difference of the following sets. For the set A, we have 0, 1, 3, 7, 1. For the set B is 1, 4, 7, 6, 5. For the set C, 0, 4, 5, 9, 10. For the set D, 7, 8, 6, 3, 2. And for the set E is, we have, for the set E, we have 10, 7, 8, 3, 4, 9. So find the answer of the following A union D number two C union E number three B union C number four A in the section C number five B in the section D number six D in the section C number seven E in the section A number eight B difference C number nine B difference A and number ten B union D. Okay. Please answer this and send to your LMS your answer, okay? If you don't have any questions, thank you very much. God bless. Bye.